Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. Recently I mentioned to you guys that I was going to start doing a lot more tutorials on this channel and I figured what better place to start than Adobe Lightroom Classic. It's been quite some time since I've added some new Adobe Lightroom videos on this channel so I decided to go on Facebook and ask the community what types of Lightroom questions everyone had and my goodness, I got quite a response. So we're definitely going to have uh, some, some questions left over for future videos. But I noticed a lot of questions uh, from Tiffany. She's asked me a lot of questions about Adobe Lightroom in the past. And uh, she had a question. Well, actually, she had a lot of questions. But one of the main things that stood out to me was her question about watermarking in Lightroom. So this is what we're going to be covering today. Now, for those of you that are not aware, I do a lot of classes here locally. I do a lot of classes at Bedford Cameron Video, and I do a lot of private lessons as well. This year, we're going to be doing our very first virtual class, and I will be discussing Lightroom Classic, and I'll be discussing the newer AI-powered masking as well as other topics. This is going to be coming up on fe uh, February the 28th, uh, and it's going to be from 6 until 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. So definitely check out the links in the description below for that. So it'll be very, very, uh, be a very, very good time. All right, though, let's go ahead and jump into today's topic of discussion. And let's discuss watermarking. Now, when it comes to uh, watermarking in Lightroom Classic, it's actually possible to do it in Lightroom as well. You do have a little bit more robust feature set within Lightroom Classic, so that's what we're going to stick with today. <clears throat> now, in order to get to uh, this point, I'm assuming that you've already gotten your images into Lightroom. And if you haven't already, I have a Lightroom Classic video that discusses how I like to import my images and how I like to set up my file system. So check out that if you haven't already seen it. But this video is assuming that that's already been done and you've uh, basically gone through your process, you've called all your images, you've done all your sorting and your editing, and now you're ready to export your images. Perhaps you're going to be exporting some things for the web and you want to be able to go ahead and have a watermark appear there. Or perhaps you want to just like put a large proof watermark across your images. This is where the watermarking is going to apply. Now here in the library module of Lightroom Classic, you can simply come over here to the left and you can click on export and you can bring up your export dialog. And as you scroll through these options, there is an option here that says watermarking. If you click on watermark here, it will actually go ahead and begin stamping your, stamping your images with a watermark. If you wanted to edit these watermarks, you can click the drop down and go down to where it says edit watermarks here and it will bring up another dialog. Now, there's another way to get to this watermark editor in Lightroom as well. So I'll go ahead and jump out of this for now. Um, if you want to go about this the other way, you could come up here and click on where it says edit and you would come down to, to where it says edit watermarks. Now, if you're working on a Mac, you would actually click on where it says Lightroom Classic at the top and then you would go down to edit watermarks in that menu. But same difference basically. Everything looks exactly the same. They just have a little bit different options on a Windows machine versus a Mac. So as you can see, this brings us right back to the watermark editor that we previously saw from our export dialog menu. And once here, we can do a few things. Now up here at the top, it says custom. And then we also have, in this case, a few other options. Uh, we have a few other watermarks that I have previously set up. You can also go in here and configure your watermark and you can come down here and save it as a new preset. Now by default, it kind of just wants to do kind of a, um, kind of wants to just do a standard text-based watermark. And you can see over here, we have an option to choose between text and graphic. And it will typically go ahead and put your name here um, and it will go ahead and put a copyright symbol, just as the basic, basic option. You can go in and change this to whatever you want. So like, for example, if I wanted to make a proof watermark, we'll go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to just type in the word proof just like this. <clears throat> if we go in here, we can also see a few other options. We can go in here. We could change the font that this text is going to appear in. We could change the style. Um, we can align the uh, text to left, center and right. Kind of uh, kind of like in a sort of like 
word processor-esque sort of way. We can change our color as well. And we have all these options here. We can even do things like uh, change our opacity and so on and so forth. So this is where this is all set up. Now, one of the main things, and as I go through this, I'm going to kind of close some of these options. If we come down to where it says uh, watermark effects, of course, we have our opacity here. But one of the main things I like about doing watermarks in Lightroom Classic is that there is this option here that says proportional. Now, why is this important, you ask? Well, I'll spare you guys a long story, but back in the day when we were watermarking in Photoshop, if we had an image that was, say, 800 by 600 pixels, but then we had another image that was, you know, 4,000 by 6,000 pixels, we had to make separate watermarks for separate image file sizes because that big text, that big watermark that would uh, show up on like a 800 by 600 image would suddenly be tiny whenever you went to a 6,000 by 4,000 resolution image. So this option in Lightroom allows us to be able to get around that because if we select this option that says proportional, Lightroom will always keep the watermark the same size and it will automatically scale it for the proportions of our image file. So that way you don't have your watermark appear different sizes just because the file pixel dimensions change. So it's a pretty cool option. I typically always have this set. And you can go in here and change a few other options. So if it's on proportional, you can go in here and you can make it a big size. So we could bring it up like this if we want it to. Uh, we would want it pretty big if this is going to be a proof watermark after all. And then down here, we do have an option of kind of moving this around. We can kind of uh, change it in different areas. I usually don't mess with this too much, honestly. I actually prefer to do this via the next option, which says anchor. This allows us to anchor this watermark to a certain part of our image. So if we were going to do something like this proof watermark, we could go in here and click there, and it would be in the center, just like that. So pretty uh, straightforward. Now, if we come in here, uh, we could actually go ahead and save this. So if I come up here to this option, which I could click save here. I could also just come over here and uh, go to the drop down and click on save current settings as new preset. And then we're going to just call this, we're going to call this center proof, just like this. Now, I noticed that Tiffany had a question about watermarking uh, whenever she posted her comment on uh, my Facebook post. She was like, hey, well, is there any way that I can like have the watermark appear in different parts of the photograph? And um, unfortunately, there's not a real, real good way to do this, um, at least not that I've ever seen. But uh, so what I like to do is I actually like to save multiple versions of my watermark for different particular uh, locations on the photograph. So notice that I've called this center proof just like this and I clicked on create. Now, if I wanted to have one for a different area, you know, perhaps I wanted to have it appear on like the bottom left, I could go in here and click the anchor point to the bottom left. And now it says center proof and it now tells us that this has been edited. So that's where coming to this drop down and going to where it says, uh, we could actually go in here and update center proof, but we wouldn't want to do that because it wouldn't be a center proof anymore. We could go in here and we could click on save current settings as new presets. And we might call this one left proof like this. So now whenever we go into our presets, we now have center proof and we have left proof. And you guys will notice that I actually have some presets saved here already. I have one that says black logo right. I have one that says white logo right. And uh, I actually had many more before I cleaned them up just prior to making this video because I didn't want to overwhelm you guys with a whole massive list of these different presets. So not ideal, but this is how I handle the whole situation of the image of the uh, watermark needing to be in different spots on the image just by making different presets in this fashion. So if we did this, I'm going to go back to the center proof option like this. So yeah, you guys can see how that works out. Now, if we go ahead and click on done right here, if we were going to actually put this watermark on an image, this is where we would get to that option via the export dialog. So if I click on export, 
Uh, let's see, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to put our images in a folder I've already created on my desktop. Let's see, oh yes, it could be the one that says Lightroom Watermark Export. We'll select that one. And that's where it's going to put our files. And we have all of our other file handling stuff here, which I have collapsed. We're going to disregard that. And then if I come down here to where it says Watermark, I can click here. And I can change this in the dropdown from Simple Copyright Watermark. And I could change this to Center Proof, just like this. And if I click on Export, just like that, voila, we should have it all set. We'll go to this folder. And there's our image. It is now all saved. And it says proof right there in the center. So that's how that works out. Now, I actually had another option here selected. We're going to call this a happy accident because it looks as though I had my image sizing turned on. I had it set to resize the image to 1600 pixels on the long edge. Um, the reason why this is a happy accident is because it allows me to show you guys that even when we, whenever we change our file resolution, that watermark is going to stay proportional. So let's not do that this time. Let's turn the resizing off and I am going to export this image again. It's going to warn us that it's a duplicate. I'm going to tell it to use a unique name just like this. Okay, so now let's take a look at it. Okay, you guys can clearly see that this image is lower resolution and this one is a higher resolution image. But even though we've got two different, two different pixel dimensions uh, going on with these images, because we made this in a proportional manner whenever we set up this watermark, the word proof appears the same size in both of these images. So that's, that's, uh, dare I say, that is, uh, that was rather game changing whenever it came out. Uh, whenever this feature came out in Lightroom, that you could keep this all proportional. So very good there. Now, let's say that you wanted to make something a bit fancier than just that uh, proof. Maybe you wanted to have like a graphic watermark appear. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that as well. So maybe you have like a logo that you want to use. I'm going to show you guys how to set up that too. So let's see, let's go to another image. Let's go to one of my lovely selfies. Look at that. I look a bit younger here anyways. So let's go to this one and let's see here. We'll, we'll make this our picture we're going to export, but let's go back to our watermark options first. We'll go in here to edit and then edit watermarks or Lightroom Classic and edit watermarks if we are on a Mac. And instead of leaving it on text, we're going to come over here and click on where it says graphic. It immediately asks us uh, where we want to get our graphic file from. So here I have a few graphic files. I've already navigated to this uh, folder that simply says Lightroom watermarks. And I'm going to select this one right here. Now, if you want to have your logo appear with transparency, you need to have a file that is a PNG type file, which is exactly what this is. So now we can go ahead and go to choose, and there you have it. The watermark instantly appears on our image. So you guys can kind of see how this all shows up. Now it's the exact same thing. We can still do everything just like we could before. I can go in here and I can change the opacity of this watermark um, and proportional is selected. So if I go in here and choose a given size, just like I showed you guys with the previous uh, text watermark, the size of the watermark will appear proportional and no matter our image resolution, it's going to stay the exact same size. So this is again, a very good option to have turned on. So let's see, we'll go ahead and choose a size here and just like last time, I'm going to go down here and select the anchor points. Now, in this case, the anchor point's not working as, it's not working out in the way that I want. I don't want my, my logo to appear so close to the edge. So instead, I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to just use these sliders to kind of fine tune the position and placement. 
and let's see perhaps it's a bit large so let's just scale it down a little bit and uh, I'd say yeah that looks good about right there and once again it's the same thing we can go in here and we could click on the drop down and we could say save current settings as new preset we'll call this one Lightroom watermark video test and create just like that and once again if we click on done that makes our new watermark and just like before if we go to export under our watermarking option we can choose the watermark we want to work with in this case I'm going to choose Lightroom watermark video test and if I click export just like that it's going to export the file in the same fashion that it exported the file previously so let's see let's have a look at it here and there we go we have it set just like that now if I wanted to have more images it'd be the same process I could go in here and I could select a lot of these images I'll just select a whole handful of them here and we've got 15 selected export same export options are choose are, are chosen and we click export here and now everything is going to go ahead and export we got that little message letting us know that we'd already exported some of these previously so I just skip those as opposed to overwriting them and there we have it now we have a whole lot of images here all with our watermark applied so very very straightforward now unfortunately uh, as I mentioned before there's not an easy way to go in and have uh, different watermarks applied to different images for like different uh, different locations in the images without having a different watermark so a lot of times I'll actually go through my images and I will actually uh, choose the images that I want the watermark to appear on say the left side of the image of and I'll export them with my watermark left preset and then I may go into like the other images that have the watermark appear on the opposite side of the image and then export them separately so that's kind of how I do that just by having multiple watermark presets all right guys if you have any questions you definitely know what to do write me in the comments below don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on the notifications because there's definitely going to be a lot more videos um, about Lightroom Classic in the future as well as many other topics and also don't forget that on February 28th we will be doing that virtual Lightroom class so definitely check out the link in the description if you'd like to sign up for that and hopefully I will see you there until next time this is Jeremy Smith signing off